Bloodstrike was recently released on Steam, and if you're watching this video, you are probably looking for the best settings to use and how you can potentially improve your FPS. So, let's dive into the video. I'm going to be going over all of the settings that we have in Bloodstrike since the latest update. And after that, I'm going to give you guys a few tips and tricks on programs and things that I do to boost my performance for Bloodstrike. Let's go. All right, first things first, we have the gameplay settings right here. So for the movement settings, we are pretty much going to turn off everything except for auto sprint and except for a running interrupt scratching. The only reason for that is to have really, really smooth movement on PC. You always want to be auto sprinting and you always want to have that running interrupt scratching. So you can pretty much always have that movement momentum going and you can have very, very smooth slides and go to windows as you want to. On mobile, that's a completely different story on mobile this needs to be turned off but that is a video for another time moving on we're gonna go over to the battle info right here so pop-up tutorial is gonna be off because you know if you're experienced you don't need this auto mark enemies auto mark items is gonna be on for your allies hide teammates names i have that on basically it will hide your teammates name and they will just have a little bubble on the top of their character which i personally think is really really clean we have hide teammate marks off because we would do want to see their marks but if someone is ping spamming you can turn this on on and then you won't see their pings anymore so that is very very nice we have the minimap on 20 that is the least zoomed in if you zoom this in more it's gonna literally like just zoom in the minimap uh so i have that on 20 up next we have low reserves warning on on show damage numbers on i have 2d feedback some people prefer 3d feedback so that's just preference i have the hit feedback color on green the reason why i have that on green is actually for content creation so if you are uh, making content for tiktok or even youtube it's best to just have the blood color on green so the you know, algorithm doesn't spot it out and doesn't uh, punish you for it. Shout out to Regasmic for telling me. We have the show hit effects on. You can turn this off if you would like. And then we have a new setting that came along with this patch, team outline effect on. Now, this is a setting that I really, really like. Basically, it's just going to outline the allies in your team. And it's also going to give them a light blue color through the wall. So basically, if your allies are fighting underneath or above, you can see exactly where they are and where they are fighting. I highly, highly recommend that you turn this on it really improves your awareness of where your teammates are and where to spot enemies and how to help them better up next we have the item section so display meds recommendations is off display loadout recommendation is off consecutive use of meds is on i really like the setting uh, otherwise you'll have to heal a one by one and press the button each time switch between medical items is on as well and then we have quick throw on off this is kind of preference as well some people actually turn this on uh, but you have to be good with your flakes for that for the pickup settings, we're going to have close pickup list when hit on, share loadout drop on, click to select item on. Auto pickup is going to be on as well. Auto pick interval is going to be short. That makes sense. Auto pickup energy also on. Auto pickup ammo for unequipped weapons also on. So this is basically all the stuff that you want to have on. So anything that is on the ground, your character will automatically loot up. And up next, we have a very, very interesting setting. We have auto pickup meds and auto pickup grenades. This is honestly preference. So for example, if you want to turn off this medical item over here, your character will only auto pick up bandages and inhalers. I had this on for a while, but I think it's actually better to keep everything off. If you do want to switch med packs and bandages around, you can do that manually. So anyway, these are my pickup settings. Up next, we have combat controls to so ADS mode. I have it on hold. Some people prefer it on tab, but I definitely think hold is better on PC. We have skill keybinds on. Auto open parachute is off. And this is very, very important to turn off because if you have this on and you are going down a zip line, it can automatically trigger the parachute and you're kind of going to be doing things that you don't want to be doing um so definitely recommend that you turn this off and always parachute whenever you activate your parachute and then finally we have reload interrupts ads on as well now up next we're going to go to the controls tab and as you guys can see this is where you key bind everything that you need on pc so i have pretty much everything on default except for one thing i have equipped main weapon and sub weapon on one and two but i also have it to a side button on my mouse and i think that's very very handy because it allows me to switch weapons incredibly incredibly fast by just a touch of my mouse um so if you have not messed around with that yet, it's a very, very good tip that I could give you. You're going to definitely be able to swap weapons, not only faster, but more efficiently without actually accidentally switching weapons. Uh, so if you're still switching weapons by scroll wheel, you need to get off of that and literally just try to do something like this. 
All right, so moving on, pretty much everything is on default over here. The only thing that I did rebind, and this is a new setting that came along with the latest patch, you have Quick Revive Teammate 1, 2, 3, and now I have that on F3, F4, F5. Previously, it was only on F5, so I've rebinded that so I can quickly res people uh, and buy them back. Up next, we have the sensitivity settings. And as you guys know, sensitivity is something very, very personal, but I'm going to go over it anyway because I know some people are curious to see what kind of sensitivity I play on. So just to give you guys an idea, I am playing with the Razer Viper V3 Pro on 900 DPI, and these are my sensitivity settings. I have switch on ADS, I have pick speed, and then we have some custom parameters over here. There you go. So we have camera sensitivity. And then we have the fire sensitivity. So just pause and have a look if you want to. But one thing that I do think is important to mention is that no ADS steering on the camera sensitivity is what makes you turn faster in the game. So let's have a look. If I turn this down all the way, I'm going to be moving incredibly fast, right? But if I turn that back down a little bit, it's going to go much, much lower. You see so if you are struggling with strafing or even turning your camera when someone pulls up on you that is a sensitivity setting that you want to be changing all right up next we have the uh, graphic settings and now i'm honestly going to tell you guys to just copy over what i have here because these are the best in-game settings to have as much frames as possible so let's have a look we have the quality mode on custom we have fps on ultra this is to get two 40 fps we have display mode on full screen we have graphics quality on low to be honest i could crank it up a little bit but the reason why i also put it on low is because i can actually see better in game i don't know about you guys but for me usually when i turn down games on their lowest quality um it's just easier to spot out enemies and just to spot out uh, people because there's less textures and less shadows we're gonna have v-sync off that is an absolute horrible setting no don't ever turn this on we have anti-lacing off as well this is a preference you can turn this on we have fov on 120 now i have it on 120 but to be honest this is preference some people like to have it on 110 some people play on 100 so it's up to you field of view i have this on associated and then we have independent there is not a huge huge difference between the two it's just a visual display that is a little bit different we have a display weapon customization on all weapons basically if you turn this off it will literally turn off all of the skins in the game to save you some extra frames so you don't have any extra effects so if you want to see all of the skins that are in the game turn this on we have the filter on vivid and then we have detailed animation on as well if you do want to turn this off it could potentially boost your frames just a little bit in my experience it doesn't boost the fps that much so i just leave it on but it's up to you guys if you do have a potato computer definitely turn off the skins and definitely turn off the detailed animations as well but that's up to you language is on english over here but we do have some other languages available so if you are not english native speaker and you're looking for your client to be in spanish arabic portuguese then here is where you can do that so these are all of my blood strike settings try them out let me know what you think about them but we're also gonna have a look at some quick tips to improve your performance for blood strike on pc via some external programs and even through windows so let's have a look now the first thing that i use a lot to boost my computer is literally a program called pc manager and it will literally boost your pc performance this is an application that you can just download in the microsoft store so let's have a look this is what it looks like right here and as you guys can see it will tell you how much memory users you have how much temporary files and there is a bunch of things that you can do with this program so what i do before playing blood strike is literally i'm just going to click on this boost button and then it's just going to boost my pc up okay now the next thing that you want to be doing before booting up bloodstrike is you have to go to the applications and then you go to process management and as you guys can see i have a lot of like background stuff happening over here adobe creative cloud because of making thumbnails and whatever and that does take up resources in the back so over here you can just literally just end any process that you don't want and if you finish doing this Literally, you're going to be able to play Bloodstrike without anything running in the background or without anything creeping up any resources from your computer. The next step that we're going to do before opening up Bloodstrike is we're going to click on this task bar over here. We're going to go to Task Manager, and then we're going to go to Performance over here. And as you guys can see, I have 26 gigabytes available in my memory, but there is 22 gigabytes cached in my system. So that is a lot of memory cached, and I have a very, very handy tool to clear that cache right here. So I'm just going to click on RAM map.x if you guys want to download this i will leave it in the description down below it's going to ask you for admin rights that's why i had 
this like black pop-up screen and as you guys can see it's just literally gonna bring up a screen over here so i'm gonna click on empty and then i'm gonna be clicking on empty standby list now if i do that it's literally just gonna clear the cache and as you guys can see over here on the task manager it is going down and that is gonna help significantly with the performance of bloodstrike as well it's gonna have all of the memory available to it so you can actually have smooth experiences now up next what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to windows graphics settings so we're gonna just go to the search bar graphics settings right there we're gonna click on that so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna click on browse and then we're gonna search for where a blood strike is installed so i'm gonna click on this like this and then a blood strike standalone and then we are just going to click on launcher.x. You have to be very, very careful. Make sure that you click on the application and not the shortcut. I'm just going to add this in and then you can go and click on to options. And then you're just going to click on high performance. That basically means that your GPU is going to like give a high performance to this program in particular. We're going to save these settings and that is done. Up next, and this is only for NVIDIA users, so if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, this is what you have to do. You're going to right-click on your desktop, and you're going to go and click on to NVIDIA Control Panel. Once you open this up, you're going to click on Manage 3D Settings, and then you're going to click on Program Settings. You guys are not going to see a blood strike straight away, but you can just click on Add, and then you can add any program right here. So... For us, in this case, we are going to click on a bloodstrike.x, add selected program, and then you're just going to be copying over the settings that I'm going to display on screen in just a second. And then you are going to apply these changes, and that is pretty much it. There is a few other things that you can do to improve performance on your PC, like, for example, clearing cache from Windows and clearing cache from your GPU. That is another different process. I'm going to link some resources in my video description down below if you're interested in that. If you are really gaming on a potato computer, this could tremendously help you boost your FPS. Anyway, these are my blood strike settings. These are the steps that I take to increase increase fps on my computer and really boost that performance if this video helped you out make sure to give it a thumbs up and i'll see you guys very very soon take care bye bye